Robin Horn. Today is a different program. <laughs> instead of my native Hosen, instead of the Alpen Horn, and I brought Patty King. Oh, It's better than later, Hosen. It's another complete person. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a bunch of different music here today. All right. Um, we've picked out a few songs. Um, basically, Patty is a uh, renowned. He's the fiddle king of the Treasure Coast. His name is Patty King. He's the fiddle king. <laughs> and he has performed in a myriad of different settings and bands and. He's played with the he plays with the String Assassins, and he played with a band called Strung Like a Horse, and um, and he isn't and he teaches in the area, and, and he says things besides yeah yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> oh! and today this is the first time we've ever performed together. Um, we have known each other. Well, he sat in with my band. But we, we've practiced, and, and I think we have some songs that we can play. Would you like to hear them? Yeah, you bet. Yes. Okay, now, how does that first song go? <laughs> okay, I got that part of it down. How does the melody go? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a song that, when we were practicing the other night, I just wrote. So, um, I... I'm doing a Joe Joe Baritis impersonation. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Actually, I have to call him tonight. Oh. He just got a rod put in his broken ankle. So. Long story. Are you tuned? Yep. I am too. <laughs> Sounds like it. Okay.
some way, shape, or form, and I think music is the great unifying universal language to help us all enjoy things. So we're going to play some stuff, and if you have some questions in between the song, raise your hand and go, what the heck are you boys <laughs> doing up there? Okay. And also, don't be surprised if we start asking questions, like the girl that just walked in here. What's your name right now? <laughs> Deanne? Deegan, okay. And how old are you? Eight. She's eight years old. Give Deegan a big round of applause. Do you play any musical instruments? What? Do you play any musical instruments? No. no? But she's going to take up the accordion in, in, in about 45 <laughs> minutes, yes. And for the first time ever, I see adults with smiles on their faces. Whoa, this is a loud instrument sometimes. <laughs> So, a lot of the music that we're going to do has improvisational elements, too, which means we're making it up as we're going along in certain ways, okay? So, that is a common denominator in what we call jazz music, is that there's improvising in it. But improvising isn't necessarily limited to jazz. Um, improvising, Johann Sebastian Bach was considered one of the great improvisers of his time the Baroque composer and, and um, musician. And we're going to do a little song here that's considered a jazz standard, but I've heard it played by all kinds of musicians. I've heard it done by country bands. One of my favorite recordings of it is done by Willie Nelson. <laughs> so we're going to do a little song that's called All of Me. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a good one. We got Patty to say a few more words. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so that's good too. Patty, why don't you tell them a little bit about your instruments? Sure. So I can care. Give these people some happiness. Uh, okay. So, I guess the history of the violin, just very briefly, it's this version of the violin was uh, maybe 15 to 1600s uh, was when it was made like this. Antonio Chateauberry, I believe, was the first one to come up with this model of design. Uh, I got this particular violin in Chattanooga, in Tennessee, and it's got all this nice like, modern stuff, and it's really pretty. Beautiful. Um, and they like it a lot. It's super cool. And uh, that's cool. Yeah. So um, I, we, we kind of have a set list, but I think we really don't need to follow it necessarily. No. So I mean, should we play something slow and pretty right now? Or should we play something faster and stupid? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Faster and stupid. I think we should do something fast and stupid. <laughs> Let's do one of your approval. Let's do that Fisher's Water Party. Okay, first of all, do we have any violin players in the house? Do any of you play violin or fiddle? Or we got any accordion players in the house? Oh, what? Good. Wow. <laughs> this is good. Okay, so um, Fisher's Horn Party. But where does this thing come from? Uh, I mean, it's a C tune, and they used to play it on all sorts of different instruments, but uh, on the ships and stuff, if they were going to play any sort of violin, they used to make them out of tin, because the weather would affect the wood and the moisture and stuff. And I can't imagine that sounding very good, but uh, hopefully this will sound a little better than that. All good. <laughs>
it's Irish kind of music. It's a hornpipe kind of tune, but I mean, the Irish just love boat travel. Now, it, it's interesting because, like, as Patty and I have been preparing music for this program, you know, we we learn about all the differences of people. You know, how we look, where we come from, what we eat, what music we listen to, and then we can learn about how so many of us are similar. I play the accordion. I play a lot of polka music. <laughs> <laughs> doobie, 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 doobie. No. Um, the thing is that that song there was in 2-4 time, like every polka that we play, and in so many ways, it's a polka. Right. You know what I mean? You could get up and dance a polka to it. Do you know? And so, I'd like to play a polka right now that wasn't on the list. Oh. And it's a song oh. you don't know. Oh, yay. Even better. <laughs> <Let's do it. laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, we have two people here who are ardent Joe Oberitis fans. Okay. And for anybody that does not know who Joe Oberitis is, he is the godfather of Polish soul. That's, that's, um, that was the, that's the name that I've always given. He's originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and he was one of my formative influences. I played drums in his band when I was in high school. He played drums in my dad's band. And I recorded a few of his songs. And this is a little song. Let me see if there's music to help the fiddle guy. Everybody, how many people hope there's music for him? <laughs> how many people hope there's not music for him and see what happens? Okay. Wing <laughs> it. Okay, let me see. There's a trumpet part which is in the wrong key for you. Let's just go. Okay, so this is a little song that's called Squeeze Me. It's in the key of A flat. Starts on a four. One, two, three, four. He is not recognized in the area 
for playing the guitar. Yeah. In fact, he has never ever played the guitar on a live gig before. He's only played it on dead gigs. <laughs> um, so he's going to not only play the guitar, something he's not done in public, but everybody go, ooh, ooh. Everybody go, ah, ah. He's going to, for the first time in his professional career, sing a song. Everybody go, whoa. Tell them a bit about this song, my friend. Well, it's an old song. Well, old to me. Uh, it's called I'll See You in My Dreams. And it's been done by uh, all sorts of different players, just like all of me, you know, same kind of style. And I listened to it for the first time from Django Reinhardt and Chet Atkins and, you know, all those kind of players. So I'm going to try to put a little bit of each one in there if I can. Cool. So we'll see. And we have some trumpet. I get to play some trumpet. Now, I was thinking I was going to use the cup mute, but as I was leaving the house today, I found this old derby mute. And so we're going to kick this old style. This was actually given to me by a friend of mine when I was in college, and we estimated that this mute came from sometime in the 1940s. I highly recommend not to wear this, okay? Because kiddos, you know, what comes out of the end of the trumpet sometimes, we can politely call it condensation, <laughs> but you might call it spit. <laughs> okay, so, Patty, take it away. All right. <laughs>
going to sing in Serbo-Croatian. <laughs> Do we have any Serbians or Croatians here? <laughs> oh, uh, well, of course, you're from Pittsburgh. <laughs> like, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a little song. What, Jamie? All I know is to say is glasses of mosquito. I did it, Gino. <laughs> that's, that's the most important thing. This is a little song that is sung, was made popular amongst a lot of the immigrant communities of Serbians, Croatians, in the United States, as well as over in the old country, by a singer named Svanko Bogdan. Yeah, Svanko Bogdan. Isn't that an awesome name? I mean, <laughs> I mean that's, that's a good name. And he's a legendary singer. And one of the things that's really interesting is that he for many years was the most popular singer in the former Yugoslavia amongst Serbians and Croatians, which are, have a long history of not liking each other, but they would unite a bit over Svanko Bogdan, you know, I mean, he would do recordings with the Tamboritsa Orchestra, yet led by Janika Balas, and then he would go record with the Hungarian Gypsy Orchestra, led by the famed fiddle player Sandor Lagerbosch. And this is one of his most popular songs. So I, of course, know, think everybody's going to sing along to a song called Epo Banke. And this is a whole <laughs> song that says, hey, Gypsy, play for me. We're going to drink. We're going to eat. We're going to dance. We're going to have a good time. I think it's a pretty good theme. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, so this is a little song from Epo Banke. And um, Patty learned this song today. <laughs> <laughs> so pay close attention. We are operating on a James Brown school of music. <laughs> James Brown was famous in his band that every time the musicians made a mistake, he would dock their pay. Okay. Okay. And for those of you who ever saw live or saw videos of James Brown, the hardest working man in show business, to go through all of the vocal antics and the stage gyrations and to be able to walk up at the end of the gig and walk up to the sax player and say you missed 11 notes, you're getting docked $100 tonight, <laughs> or whatever the thing was, pretty legendary, pretty good. I don't know that I have that ability level, so I'm going to count on you to pick all the mistakes that Patty's playing today. Uh, so. Um, Kids, pay attention. If something he plays sounds sour, let me know. Okay? You got that for me? Okay. Yeah, 
Many svirati, dicesh. Many svushati, evo bani cigari boy. Cigari boy, svirai miti. Ja, ju, many svirati, dicesh. Many svushati, evo bani cigari boy. Cigari boy. Shandor Lakatosh, one of the most famous Hungarian gypsy violinists. And I don't know, do we have any Hungarian people here today? Awesome! I'm hungry too! Awesome. Uh, but the national dance of Hungary is called a charlash. And there are thousands upon thousands of traditional Hungarian chardashes, and there are these beautiful melodies. Evo Banke has been performed in chardash medleys. And you know, you have these minor songs, and they're so passionate. And, and so you would think that I'm going to feature Patty now on the most famous chardash in the history of mankind of music. You're going to assume it's Hungarian, right? The national dance of Hungary, right? It is not. The most famous chardash is written by a gentleman named Vittorio Monti, an Italian. <laughs> you know, you need the Italians to perfect everything, right? You know, no, it's it shows the international feel and the flavor. So, Patty. 
Get your Italian, Hungarian, <laughs> native Floridian. Can, can you tune up the little fiddle? Okay, perfect. <laughs>
he has his mandolin out. And so we're going to play a song very associated with Italian. Because we have an offer. You're not going to refuse. You can't. <laughs>
pretty little song on it first. This is a little song that was written by the music of the button accordion is, is found a lot in lower Germany and Bavaria, in Austria and in Slovenia. And so this first little song, it's gonna be a little waltz. It's gonna have a nice little lilt to it, written by a gentleman from Slovenia, the late Luisa Slack. And then I am going to play a faster tune. <laughs> and it's a little song that's called Hobo Polka by my father. <laughs> Uh, and and he, we recently celebrated 
his 25th birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give him a round of applause. So it's his 25th birthday. I believe it. It, 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 it might have been an anniversary of his 25th birthday. Yeah. You know, but um, I remember that for his birthday party, him and his lovely wife, they wanted one specific song, and it was an old country song. And a little song made famous by the singer Anne Murray. And Joseph over here is who introduced us. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe an, an Anne Murray country song isn't exactly what he wants to hear, but I'll get you something as well, too. Um, we'll, we'll close with something that, that I, I will do something that I sing in, in German. So no, no worries over there. <laughs> uh, a great chef and a good friend. Um, so we're going to do a little song um, that is called Could I Have This Dance? Okay? So you know the song? It's a country waltz. You'll get it. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I, I, I love doing that. That's the thing. Isn't he a tremendous musician here? <laughs> that we played here today, there were about three or four songs that we both knew. And then there was one song that he knew that I didn't know, and the rest of them were all songs he doesn't know. And so it's, it's fun. I, I think we should keep them around a little bit, you know what I mean? So I hope you enjoy this little rendition of Could I Have This Dance. Remember the song they were playing the first time we danced in I knew as we swayed to the music and held to each other. I fell in love with you. Could I have this thing? For the rest of my life, would you be my partner every night? When we're together, it feels so right. Could I have this dance for the rest of my life? So Especially Susan and David and Jamie, who are here, give them a nice round of applause. They are the reason that library.
libraries rock. It doesn't matter how old you are. There's so many different activities. There's so many resources available to us here. Take advantage of it. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. There's books. And it's great to get educated and keep your mind sharp and learn new things. We're never too old to learn new things. And uh, I'm going to close out with a little song that Patty recently learned. <laughs> and uh, um, it's recorded on my Three Ring Circus album, and it's a little Austrian yodeling song called oh. Big Vagabund. Oh. <laughs> See you at the end. All right. <laughs> okay, <I guess> <laughs> So in answer to your question, I'm not sure we're the next time we're in Florida. Um, yes. <laughs> um, sometime in October, we're down here. Uh, we'll, we'll be performing a private event. So everybody that's a member of the Stewart Yacht Club is welcome to come on over. If you're not, join. Um, and we'll be up in Winter Park and 
but follow us online. That's that, hopefully there'll be something coming up soon. Great. Well, thank you very much.